What's the crack lads? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a quick look not at these legends we've already covered at in a previous video but we're going to be taking a look at the Spanish league selection that come with this pack because chances are if you are spinning for these you're going to get one of these uh, guys as a consolation prize or else maybe you should genuinely spin for Pedri or Camavinga because they are beastly players in this pack right Pedri especially I mean he looks like an absolute monster right so there is eight players in this pack I think um, or ten and you've got a Jose Perez there a Mascarell there as well there isn't that many players to focus on really apart from the top three boys I mean Pareo is very very weak uh, in terms of speed and stuff but we'll go through them all right we'll go through all the players and just give you a quick glance at them with their training guys right so this guy's not bad he's got some very nice player skills um he's got nice haircut as well um which is also bonus <laughs> but um he goes to actually a 91 with this build that we have here right so we've got the build there that we want to take a look at 91 overall that's going to give us 88 acceleration and balance as well as ball control and dribble so we're effectively going to have a 90 uh rated right midfielder roman flank with some pretty decent skills right i would also say that this guy as a dmf is a very nice anchor man if you do get him he's got 75 acceleration 75 speed with the boost and of course he's going to have very good defensive skills but you know you're, you should genuinely lads you should not be spinning for any of these and being like oh i hope i get this guy mascarel he looks like a dominant anchorman i mean you shouldn't be wasting your coins on guys like this these are basically squad top-up guys or players that you get as consolation prizes that can slot in if they're up on form and as you said these guys are not going to be game changers for you right even this guy here i would say frutos this guy has got a very nice acceleration acceleration but his dribbling is nice as well but other than that he's not really offering anything i mean as a player that is a roman flank you're better off with perez there if you could get him um that they're both kind of similar players right that kind of brings us on to Danny Parejo. We've seen him before in having nice cards, but this card, lads, look at that speed and acceleration. He is down as an orchestrator, which is the same play style as a lot of key center midfielders at the moment. I would definitely prefer a box-to-box, -box. but even if you want an orchestrator, I just genuinely don't see why you would bother because you're not gaining anything apart from insane stats such as low pass and ball control that are going to be into the high 90s, right? But to be honest, there's no real point in it. I know he's going to be silky smooth on the ball because he's a tall player, um, taller than most attacking midfielder slash, you know, center midfielder attacking players. But his balance is really good, but he just doesn't have enough in his arsenal there, I don't think, to be, you know actually in your squad i mean he's not a bad player he's got some really nice player skills um one touch pass true passing and, and he has low lofted which is a big 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 thing for him as well um but double touch is nice as well if you wanted to train him up a little bit i do think that he's a fine player but that speed and acceleration for what is working in the game at the moment you need that at least 75 plus right so that brings us on kind of to the three big boys right and we also have this guy, where is he? This guy here as well, just to kind of round it off, right? We also have this guy here as an attacking midfielder. Doesn't have that many player skills. He has one touch pass, but that's roughly kind of the main one. Speed and acceleration, same issue when we have him trained up there. If you want to train and guide on him, that's probably the best version of it. I mean, he has got high levels, like, but th those levels aren't going to really do much for him apart from dribbling. Tight possession, low pass and ball control all into the 90 zone, which is nice, to be honest. It is nice. But that gives us the three big boys, right? And as I said, I'm not going to spend too much time because I have probably reviewed and broke down the Paul and Camavinga multiple times, as well as Pedri. Pedri has got about 20 cards now, I'd say. No joke, right? So when you are looking at the likes of Camavinga, the Paul, and Pedri, I would say that Pedri's best position now is attacking midfield, right? Even though he's down as a CMF. And I would also say that the Pauls is, right? What do I mean by the Paul? Well, the Paul is down as a whole player. So, you know, people might remember or might think back to the World Cup and they say, like, oh, the Paul is more kind of like a, a Roy Keane style player in terms of, you know, protecting Messi and all that. But he's actually a brilliant player on the ball, right? So I've actually played with him quite a lot. I've also played with his teammate Marcus Lorente. And both of them are kind of similar players, but kind of slightly different in their roles when they play, right? Look at the skills that he has, right? He's got double touch. He's got low lofted pass. If you can stick one touch pass on DePaul, you've got one of the best hole players in the game. Now, he can cover so much different positions. He's a beast on the ball. And he also has that aggression quite high straight off the rip as well, right? When we take a look at one of his best builds, I would say that this is probably it, right? So because of the 31 levels that you're going to get, you're going to have 90 ball control, 90 dribbling, 90 plus tight possession, 90 pass, 90 plus lofted pass, and 
90 acceleration. His balance is going to be key. Um, his stamina is going to be good. Defensively, we've stayed away from that because he's going to be a whole player. We don't need to throw him in defensively. Um, let me know if you guys prefer him as a defensive type player, but to be honest with you, I wouldn't. I would play him as a as a as a in the pocket whole player um that is just able to, you know carry the ball forward and one thing I found with the Paul lads is he gets on a lot of rebounds him and Bellingham seem to be really good at getting on rebounds right we also have Camavinga okay so Camavinga is down here and Camavinga is going to have some fairly nice stats when we train him up Camavinga is going to be the type of player that if you are trying to train him up you do need to kind of be how would I say it you do need to kind of know that he's got 36 levels which is huge but he doesn't have a lot of nice player skills if you're going to be playing him as kind of a center midfielder box to box type player now he's down as an orchestrator I would definitely put him box to box and train him like Bellingham right like his Real Madrid teammate you've got 88 ball control and low pass which is huge and then also you've got 89 defensive engagement with the rest of his defensive stats in the high 80s uh, which is really nice speed and acceleration is always nice to have that around the 85 mark if you can get it Camavinga looks like a beast the fact that he's down as a orchestrator is a little bit of a concern but it's not a massive concern i think for this player right and then last but not least we do have the pick of the pack and i would probably throw him into the legends pick as well i mean he is insane i mean if you don't get javier guti and you get pedri and you've never played with pedri before he will be game changing for you i would put pedri lads genuinely in my top five players in the game any card it doesn't matter obviously his standard card is going to be the weakest but any card of pedri the whole player player of the week Pedri was definitely top five cards ever released in my opinion and um, they have nerfed him a little bit but he's just so good on the ball and he's able to win the ball back very very effectively as well right he's got excellent player skills there you've got that long range shooting you've got double touch you've got soul control you've got one touch pass you've got Marseille turn you've got true pass and pinpoint cross and an outside curler if you stick low loft to pass on him it will be an insane card if you can get that low loft to pass skill on him but in terms of his build, lads, right, look at his build here that we have with those 35 levels. 91 ball control, 88 dribble and 91 tight possession, 93 low pass and 88 loft to pass. So every stat that, I, that you see there from ball control down to loft to pass is going to be 90 plus. We're also going to get 90 acceleration. We're going to get 98 balance. We're going to get 94 stamina. And this is for an attack and midfield type player, right? So even at level one, lads, right, with, Ped with uh, Pedri here, even at level one here with Pedri, like you're going to have essentially one of the best attacking midfielders in the game straight off the rip. So I definitely think he's worth spinning for. Um, if you don't have a version of Pedri, this is the man to go for. Um, now, look, you could get any of these guys. Javi and Deco and Guti are brilliant. This, these four here are insane attacking midfielders that if you haven't bought any of the premium Messi packs or anything like that, these guys can literally be end game attacking midfielders if you train them right and if you actually play them to their strengths, right? So check out my other video on the legends. But until then, I will talk to you in a bit. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you later.